Well, welcome, uh, Mr. Ignatiev. It's a great pleasure that you're here with us today, the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, leader of the official opposition, and MP for Etobicoke Lakeshore. And this man, uh, since first being elected to Parliament in 2006, Mr. Ignatiev has traveled to every corner of the country, listening to Canadian stories, talking to them about their hopes and dreams for their children and grandchildren. It's the same approach that he's taken in a long career as a scholar, a writer, a journalist, and as one of Canada's leading voices on the world stage. Before entering politics in 2005, Michael served as director of the Carr Center for Human Rights at Harvard University and taught in many of the leading universities around the globe. He's been a proud contributor to public policy for nearly four decades internationally as an author broadcaster and advisor, sir, from across this country, uh, from every part of it, we welcome you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Michael. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here this morning. It's an enormous pleasure to be with you. I was talking to someone about uh, people in the social economy field and I said, uh, give me your sense of who they are and this guy said very memorably, these are the people who put the heart and soul into the Canadian economy. So that's what you do and I'm great to be here, great to be here. And when you think about it, the role of a government is to work with you to put heart and soul and conscience in, into the economy. Uh, otherwise, we have an economy driven by instincts, driven by impulses, which don't put people first. Government is there to make sure that an economy serves the people and not the other way around. That's been a core part of the liberal vision as long as I can remember, and I'm delighted to be here with you this morning. You're the grassroots entrepreneurs who in the not-for-profit sector, you're, act, you're active in every community in the country, including in my own uh, constituency. You're involved in social housing, you're involved in the environment, you're involved in training, you're involved in care services. And uh, I'm really here just to thank you for the day in, day out, 365 days a year service that you give to the Canadian community. Thank you so much. Je suis ici avec un de mes députés, Alexandra Mendez, euh, le grand député de Brossard, et elle est là. Au... Voilà. Salut, Alexandra. C'est un de vos meilleurs amis au sein du caucus libéral. Euh, C'est un point de contact avec le caucus libéral et ce, ce grand mouvement euh, qui est québécois, qui est francophone, qui est anglophone, qui est pan-canadienne et que nous, nous aimerions uh, soutenir quand nous devenons le gouvernement du Canada. I want to just uh, renew a commitment that uh, Prime Minister Paul Martin made to you in 2004. Uh, he said to you then uh, that he wanted to make the social economy, quote, a key part of Canada's social policy toolkit. And I wanted to reiterate that commitment made by a Liberal government in 2004 and tell you that this will be a commitment in an Ignatieff government, so that you understand that clearly. <laughs> to get down to brass tacks, and this is why I want to issue an invitation to work with me and to work with Alexandra, on, I think, the key piece of the next stage of the relationship between the social economy networks represented here and, the, and a federal government, is how to create the right fiscal framework so that uh, we create the right incentives, the right nudges, the right uh, forms of cooperation, uh, above all in the fiscal framework, so that you can uh, uh, engage in profitable enterprise, plow it back into the social and environmental and caring activities that you take part in, and create a fiscal framework that makes it possible for you to work in this area successfully. You're not all the same thing. You have different relations to the uh, federal income tax system, 
We need to work with you to find a new model of engagement that allows us to work with you to maximize what you do. And that is the specific area that I'd most like to work with this group, and Alexander and I pledge to work with you and your leadership to get that done and go into the next election with a commitment that supports and sustains the social economy. We are also linked by other uh, commitments and concerns. What is a political party? A political party is a, is a social institution concerned to mobilize citizens and get them out to vote. And let's be honest, we're not doing as good a job as we should. I'm not just talking about the Liberal Party, which has always got a lot to learn, but political parties in general. We're in the business of getting people committed to civic life. We're in the business of getting people out to vote. And we know, and it's a statistic we all need to dwell on, that only one in five Canadians age 18 bothered to vote in the last federal election. What, what are we in the Liberal Party doing about it? We're trying to open the doors and open the windows of our parties and listen to Canadians as carefully as we can. At the Montreal conference, we had not just 400 people in a room like this, but we had 25,000 Canadians participating online through the whole weekend of our Montreal conference. This was the largest political gathering ever held in Canada and was my uh, proof of my commitment to open the political process to young voices, new voices, different voices, voices that often disagree with us, and I want you part of the Liberal Party's conversation with Canadians as we go forward, because we're in the same business, which is mobilizing and seeking to engage Canadians to engage with their communities and make this a stronger and uh, uh, better country. We came out of Montreal with some very clear commitments, which fit very well with the entrepreneurs in the social economy. We committed to learning. We can't live with ourselves as a society if Aboriginal Canadians do not complete high school. We cannot live with ourselves if there remains a funding gap between the money we invest in Aboriginal education and non-Aboriginal education. It just won't do. We can't live with ourselves in a society where immigrant Canadians, new Canadians like my father, don't get the language help, the communications help that they need to participate fully in the Canadian economy. We can't live with ourselves unless we invest in post-secondary education so that we can honestly say to every hard-pressed Canadian family, you get the grades, you get to go. That commitment to learning seems to me at the core of preparing Canada not only to meet the economic challenges of the future, but also to be a more equal society. It all, equality all starts with education. This is, you're in this field, we're in this field, and we're in this field together. The other area, the second area where we made a commitment that I think fits very well with your concerns is in relation to care. Everywhere I go across Canada, and you meet it in your work, and you're at the front lines of this, we meet Canadian families crushed under the burdens of caring for young children without adequate resources and caring for aging parents. They want to keep, they want to shoulder their responsibilities. They love their families. They don't want anybody else to, to do it, but they need some help. That's why I'm such a passionate devotee, so passionately committed to early learning and childcare for every Canadian family that needs it. And I... <laughs> it's why I'm so committed to work with you to find ways in which we can strengthen the care networks that provide caring services for family who are trying to keep uh, an aging family and loved family member at home. My mother died of Alzheimer's disease. I've been through this. I know what this does to families. They're proud. They, they want to sustain their families, but they need help. You provide the community service networks that hold families up, and we want to work with you to provide better and more sustained and more compassionate care for every single Canadian family facing the burden of care. And you do a wonderful job, and we need to find ways to do it better together. Let me mention another area where I think we have convergence of, of views and convergence of interests. We believe very strongly in a national food policy to put more Canadian food on Canadian plates. 
Et quand je vois le travail que vous faites, quand je vois par exemple le travail de Equiter, euh, le programme d'agriculture soutenu par la communauté, the, the, uh, the program that Equiter has to make sure that good biological, uh, environmentally sound uh, agricultural products reach families in need, that's exactly the kind of community work that we want to support and engage with as part of our national food policy. And when I talk about care in Quebec, il y a le centre de soutien au réseau familial, les coopératives de services à domicile. On peut pas travailler afin de soigner, afin d'aider les familles sans les réseaux que vous avez mis en place. C'est crucial pour l'avenir du Canada. And let me give you the wider perspective on here. Nobody at the Montreal conference said to us, you know what we need, Canada? We need another big, heavy federal program. What everybody said to us is we need to create networks of responsibility in which we define a common problem. Let's take the problem of care in the family. Who is playing in this field? Who is leading in this field? I'm looking at you. You're the people who have to be at the table, with the federal, with the provincial, with the municipal partners, with the for-profit sector, the non-profit sector. We have to put the jurisdictional tangles aside and say, here is a common challenge. We've got the aging population. We've got the retirement of the baby boomers. We've got a social challenge. This is a compassionate society. How do we define the networks of responsibility together that meet these challenges and get this done so that at the end of the day, we achieve what everybody in this room wants to be able to look yourself in the mirror as a Canadian and say, we are the most progressive and compassionate society on earth when it comes to caring for families and caring for seniors. If that's the goal, we can do it together. One final thought about this idea of networks of responsibility that I, that I want to stress. The conservative government's relationship to the civil society and NGO sector, it seems to me, is characterized time and again by manipulation and domination. When Kairos, an umbrella church organization that does development work in, in developing countries for 30 years, begins to disagree with the government, they get their funding shut off. This relationship of domination, of intimidation, is an unhealthy one. You should have the independence, the capacity to do your work in cooperation with the government, but not under the domination of government. We have to understand we can't get there without you. The wrong way to relate to you is to control you with the purse strings of short-term funding driven by ideological and political reasons. We have to trust you and you have to trust us. This is not an abstraction for me. This is how I work in my own constituency, in my own riding. When I went on Saturday morning to a new opening of a community park, this park was not opened by the city of Toronto. It had no federal funding. It was done by you, working with a land developer who was able to seed the land so that we could create a community garden. Uh, the community garden will be put together by uh, young offenders who are uh, given the task of rebuilding this garden. I looked there and I saw a community creating something that had not existed before. Government can co facilitate, government co cooperate, government can help, but government has to trust you to do it. I want you to understand that this politician, the party that I am proud to lead, and the government that we will form wants to work with you to create a progressive, compassionate Canada in which we trust you to mobilize the country, mobilize the community with our cooperation and support to create the country we can be fully proud of. Thank you so much for listening to me.
Well, I would say, uh, Mr. Ignatieff, uh, you've, uh, I think you've, you've earned some trust with some of your comments today, that your declaration of putting the social economy back on the agenda is welcome, that your sense of challenging us and entering into a dialogue around how we co-produce co-construct policy in a fiscal framework that will enable communities uh, to be uh, empowered and uh, resourced by mobilizing from within the community in a fiscal framework that makes sense. That is uh, really important and we've got a lot of ideas around that. Uh, I think we probably share some of your ideas about uh, you know, the, the state of our political democracy. We would extend the discussion in this forum to include economic democracy as kind of a key uh, area that we're working in and um, we like this idea I'm sure of the networks of responsibility and a partnership approach that indeed is different than the kind of uh, approach that we're experiencing now with some of our people here who have dared to put advocacy forward and found their funding cut uh, increasingly because of that, and we welcome very much all of that. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here.